welcome to the Grok Shop. This is the Little Blue Flame. So like in reality, the Little Blue Flame is actually not so hot. So this is a 36 volt club car and when the batteries are uh, in good shape, it's not super fast. But they're all run down now and it's terribly slow. So it's definitely um, about that time, time to replace the batteries. Since I'm replacing the batteries, I figure I'll go ahead and convert it over to 48 volts. So set of 48 volt batteries and the additional electrical work needed for that. Um, this first part will be covering the prep work. Second part will be all the fun electrical stuff. So knowing this is a club car, I knew I could find the serial number plate right behind this uh, part of the dash here. The first part of the serial number is all that really matters, so A9338 for me here. To decode it, I went to buggiesunlimited.com. They have kind of a magic decoder ring. Um, so basically the first letter set there is the uh, part that tells you the, the model, which for me was a DS Electric. Um, before they split the models off and the last part um, is the year 93 for me and the week so, so the 38th week of 1993 we can also find out a little more about the motor by pulling the model number off the motor itself once you have the motor part number you can go to this Luna site lunaindustriesinc.com they have a lot of electric motor information I find out that it's a GE motor capable of two horsepower and 2800 rpm and it was targeted for a 36 volt club car so that makes sense and the 2800 figure tells me that it was uh, uh, the torquey version of the motor i know there's a couple different versions anything over like 3000 rpm is going to be more for speed this one's a little more torquey which is great it's just exactly what i needed so yeah here you can see the six six volt batteries uh, total to 36 volts um, the goal will be to just basically replace all these with six eight volts and make it a 48 volt cart um, As you can see the condition here is uh, it's pretty rough starting out So this particular cart turns out to be one of the earliest versions of a controller series cart um, So instead of using uh, resistor coils, it actually had a motor controller which makes them much more efficient so when undertaking a big electrical project like this, you're going to want to find the electrical diagram, especially the one that you're coming from, and then the one that you want to go to, or one that's most like the one that you want to get to. I'll put some links to these below in case they're useful to anybody else. So yeah, once I got all the batteries out and some of the wires moved around, I was able to get a better look at some corrosion problems that I knew I had, plus some frame damage, right, where the seat support brackets go there. So the first thing I want to do is take the V-Glide out. It's this pizza-shaped throttle controller thing. Um, and make sure that it, it still worked okay because it would determine the direction I was going to go as far as the whole controller setup. Um, the V-Glide has, has a bunch of these huge copper uh, contactors inside. It actually looks pretty cool, um, but it was originally for high current. Like if you have a resistor cart. Um, it would be a high current device, but for the controller carts, it was actually a low current device and a huge waste of copper. But anyway, um, all these contacts still need to be clean, so I didn't have some emery paper. Um, I just decided to take a, a sponge sander that I had and just sort of cut it down. And um, you need a thin piece to clean up under the wiper arm here, unless you choose to remove the wiper arm. I didn't want to remove it, so I just took my thin, the thin piece, and sort of uh, slipped it under there, and then used the wiper to sand itself, actually. So at the end of the day, you should pretty much have shiny copper surfaces um, on all those contacts and on the wiper. And then I took a Q-tip with some uh, alcohol and cleaned all around the inside. It was pretty filthy. I mean, 25 years, you know. Um, and then, of course, um, to test it out, uh, just used a voltmeter. And it's essentially a 0 to 5K resistor device. 
It's basically another way of looking at it. It's like a stepping pot or stepping potentiometer instead of a infinitely variable. It goes through the steps, but that's how the throttle turns. And then as you can see on the voltmeter, the different uh, steps it goes through from zero throttle uh, at zero K resistance up to almost 5K at max throttle. Now, when taking this thing apart, I had some problems with these brass standoffs. Um, and then, of course, you know, finding a replacement can be a bit of a challenge. I found them online, though. Um, I can put a link to that as well below. So since it still worked, I knew I could use the V-Glide for throttle control. Next up to clean was the FNR, our forward and reverse switch. Um, you can see it's pretty filthy. I decided to go ahead and clean this up, too, and make sure it was salvageable. The ones on these older carts are actually pretty heavy duty. There's really no need to replace. You can see they got big copper bars going across there. Also decided to clean up the charging receptacle. Definitely needed it. Next, I decided to start sanding, uh, grinding down the corrosion on the frame. Um, it really needed it. I decided to use this uh, stripper disc um, with an angle grinder. It was definitely very effective, much better than the wire wheel approach. I'll put a link to that below. For the corrosion where the frame was eaten through really bad, I decided to replace with some straight bar aluminum I got at Home Depot for pretty cheap. Notice that I use countersink bolts for this. Um, you don't want anything poking the bottoms of your batteries. Um, but you could also use angle aluminum. And you can grind off the old angle aluminum if you want. I just decided to repair it. So instead of re-welding those broken seat brackets, um, my cart had this other piece of aluminum that was stuck in there. I guess someone had kludged it or something to try to repair it before. Um, I had my welder just uh, weld that piece directly on. I think it turned out much stronger than the old brackets. So once the damaged area was kind of fixed up, I decided to uh, paint with some um, undercarriage, uh, rubberized undercarriage paint, and uh, also painted the motor a little bit with some extra paint I had laying around. I also painted the axle tubes, which were showing a little bit of rust, sanded them down, put some black enamel undercarriage paint on there. Using this new seat support bracket thing, I knew I had to uh, make some holes for carriage bolts. Um, so I manually did that with a drill and a jigsaw. Here you can see the bolt progression. The original carriage bolts on the right, and then the one that came with the controllers in the middle, and the one I ended up using is the one on the left now with everything torn apart i figure it's a good time to go ahead and change out the transaxle oil or rear end oil um, i've never done it in the five years i've owned the cart it's probably never been done at all so get her done to change the oil you have to take out the fill bolt and the drain bolt and uh, that drain bolt uh, it was stuck pretty good um, ended up using a little lever there and uh, got it on off To get a little extra of that dirty oil out, I decided to use the uh, syringe, suction out what I could from the bottom and the top. For new oil, I decided to use uh, 30 weight Royal Purple and um, 
I think 30 weight is what the tech manual calls for in most cases for this model. And to be able to fill in this uh, sideways tiny hole, I just um, hot glued on some vinyl tubing into the bottom of this, um, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> a flimsy adjustable funnel. Um, I'll put a link to that stuff um, as well below. Before putting the drain bolt back in, I decided to do a little flush. So an interesting nugget about these fill hole gaskets is they're roughly the same size as the Honda Automotive drain plug fill gaskets. And if you have a Honda, that's mighty convenient. Um, so I happen to have a huge baggie of those lying around. Uh, they're really cheap um, from this place on Amazon. I'll put a link to that below if anybody needs it. So yeah, it takes a while to fill this real with this tiny tube, <laughs> but um, you just basically fill till it starts to flow right back out at at you out of the um, fill hole, and that's when you know you're done. I spray on a little bit of 50 50 uh, simple green get it cleaned up a little bit but yeah that's pretty much how it's done for changing the oil and all the prep work um, all the fun electrical stuff will be in part two so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching